Hey, Rod. Hey. What's hey, up? Deborah. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations for the, you know, the film in general and the first screening at Lighthouse. Yeah. It, it, and, it actually was the first. I mean, it's crazy times. It, it literally was the first screening of The Outpost um, in this form in the United States, certainly for audience. Yeah, I, I can tell you it was great. Like, uh, there were like around 60 cars, uh, you know, probably three to four people in a car. Uh, That's true. And, and, and it seemed that, you know, people were really excited. And, uh, you know, it was a special night and a special, you know, event because that was also, you know, our opening film in these crazy times. And, you know, we think that, we do, that we're doing like something special. So to uh, to open with this special film that was great for us. So thanks so yeah, much for letting us. I saw the photos and uh, our big boss at Screen Media was there and he said that it went great and said that the sound system was really good and that everybody had a lot of fun. That's a fun way to see a movie. Yeah, I was great. dubious. I was very dubious. I know. Well, we had like you know a moment when the the the, the wind there was like kind of oh well like you know it it might like uh something will happen but like we our crew like they were like the they are probably under the inspiration of the outpost they jump on it and <laughs> all went well in the end um all right. <laughs> so tell us about your connection to the to the to the story of the outpost because i know that you're a, a west point um graduate right so you have a special connection to uh, do the American Army. Um, tell us about that. Well, you know, I was the first Israeli born uh, graduate of West Point. And <laughs> so, and my dad uh, fought in four of the wars, four of the Arab Israeli wars. And so, yeah, I've had a very strong connection to the military all my life. And now, in particular, to the American military because I was an officer in the United States Army for several years after I graduated from West Point. And I'll tell you what, I'm here. I never served in combat. A lot of my classmates did. And I guess there's a certain amount of guilt involved with that. Um, and I've always wanted to therefore make a movie that since I couldn't be necessarily in, um, in combat, next to my brothers, I can make a movie to honor them. And um, I think that's what we mm. did with The Outpost. Interesting. Oh. Um, and. Talk, like talking about like you know we know that that the script was based on Jake Tapper's uh, mm -hmm. book about uh, the Battle of Kamdesh. So you know about that how everything like you know started like how did you work with with Jake with with uh, uh, Paul Tomasi and and Eric Johnson you know all well, that process. So, so I was approached um, uh, by Sam Raimi about three years ago to uh, direct a film. He was going to direct it for his own reasons, decided that he couldn't or wouldn't do it. And um, I was not available at the time. I thought the script was, uh, the script was very good. The version of it was a different script back then. Um, I thought it was very good and uh, was very interested, wanted to do it. But then I got um, a television show of mine, got picked up to go to pilot, and I disappeared for a little while. And uh, when that was over, when the dust settled on that, I heard from a guy named Paul Merriman, who had been an assistant to Sam Raimi, who, when he left Sam, was given this script. He was given the right to go out and try to make it as a film, because now Sam was dropping out as a producer as as well. The reasons why, a little vague, I, I don't, you know, maybe just not his thing or wanted to do his own thing. And um, then I met with uh, Paul Merriman and Paul Tamasi and Eric Johnson, who were the Oscar-nominated writers of the fighter, we met him at Arts Deli. It's a classic place to meet to to discuss making movies, and um, you know they wanted to make it into a mini series, which I thought probably wasn't um, really workable. Um, but we heard that there was this one company that had always wanted to make this film that was called Millennium, you know, Avi Lerner's company, and uh, we went over there a couple of days later and uh, literally sold it in the room. We all made the decision to make the movie in that room, pending casting, of course. And um, so, and again, you worked with Jake Tapper, right? Like, you know, he was, 
I saw that, mm-hmm. he, that you know that he was on set and like he was or he was in touch with you guys, right? One of the most fun things about this movie was talking to Jake Tapper. You know, I um, I communicated with him almost immediately. I gave him a, I gave him a phone call, and um, and we spoke for like a long time. And we spoke a lot about the outposts and about the various characters that were in the film and in the book, those that were alive and the families of the deceased, and how he told me a little bit about everybody and how it was going to go forward for me dealing with these people, uh, these wonderful people. Um, but mostly, we talked politics. <laughs> you know, we talked, I'm, I'm so, and, and I talked about the covering of politics because that has changed so dramatically over the years. Um, and it, it was interesting because the first thing I think I said to Jake is, so the poker face is totally gone in any sort of coverage. Now, everybody knows what everybody, what everybody thinks. Right. That was how more or less our conversation began. And I have really enjoyed working and talking to Jake almost on a weekly basis, sometimes every other day especially now towards this end run. Yes, he did come to set. There's no uh, journalist in America, no, no broadcast journalist in America that I think ha- is more indebted to the American soldier than Jake Tapper. In fact, Jake, uh, I believe, gave, gave away his entire advance on this film to military charities. Okay. Um, you could, like, you know, you're watching the, the output, so it's, it's a story about heroism, like, you know, like mm-hmm. the heroic, soldiers but i think that you're not making it like a myth like that's something that you're very successful doing you're not like making it like oh these people are you know superheroes or these people are action heroes they are really uh they're human beings and they you well, know yeah so well so, let, let me leap in on that because that's that's maybe you're now uh, talking about maybe the most important thing about this film is that there are many many great war films about the Afghanistan war, uh, Zero Dark Thirty, um, Lone Survivor, um, uh, American Sniper, which was more Iraq, I, I right. guess. But all those films deal with military superstars, with the Rangers, with the Navy SEALs, with the Delta Force, with the Green Beret. And the thing about our movie, these soldiers, these 54 soldiers, Amir, they were, they were just regular guys that were put at the bottom, at the base of three mountains. And we all knew that at some point the Taliban, in numbers vastly bigger than them, were going to descend upon them and try to kill all of them. And uh, that happened on October 3rd, 2009. And so you've got these regular dudes, regular guys, you know, not trained and more special than anybody else now having to combat uh, this incredible unit of, uh, of enemy soldiers. And that is, I think, one of the most special things about this movie, and probably the most unique element of the movie in comparison to other films of this war. Yeah, uh, if I may say so, you did a great job doing that, because I really felt like that. I did. It didn't feel like, you know, an action film, really, like, you know. Like well, you know, you know, you know, uh, Amir, that, that's, a, that's another good point. It's, it's something that uh, we have to keep reminding ourselves over and over again as so we're making a war film, not an action film. Right. And that those are two completely different genres. Right. Completely different genres. Right. Um, you, like, you, have, you do have a lot of amazing action scenes like re, like that, that you really feel embedded in it. Like you feel that they're really, they're real. And again, because the characters, they're not like action figures. It's not that you have Jason Statham, like, you know, jumping from, you know, uh, one building to the other or something like that. You have like real, it's, it seems really raw and visceral. Uh, but on the mm-hmm. other hand, I, I think that you don't want the action scenes to take over the film, right? It's like, you don't want it to be an action film. You want it. So how do you balance between- we want, What we want is for people to feel like they're in the midst of, of combat. And one of the ways that we did that, there are two things, a lot of things we did, but one of the things that we did was that we shot most of the battle in oneers. In other words, we didn't uh, do several cuts. Hmm. When you see it in action, it, it, it flows for like, you know, for one, two, three, in one case, four minutes. And, uh, and the action, uh, you, you know, you're feeling the action and the bullets and the explosions 
with um, with the with the characters. It, you subliminally, when you have all those cuts, you're reminded that you're in a film. And here we try to take people outside of the experience of watching a movie and rather they think they're in a movie, I think. The other thing was that we spent a good deal of time trying to make you understand and know these characters who are all, with the exception of one person, uh, real life people. Mm. And, um, and so that when they fall, if they fall in the movie, you feel something, you understand something. These are not just, you know, bodies falling. It's not a James Bond film, you know. And, and you know, and, and like I said, nor is it a film about superheroes. They're just regular, as you said, they're regular guys in a terrible combat situation. You know, two men, one, or they don't like to use that word, two men received the uh, Medal of Honor for their actions at the Battle of Kandesh, two out of the uh, 54. And, uh, there were several silver stars, and there were two distinguished service crosses uh, that were uh, just upgraded from silver stars that um, occurred in this film. So you can imagine the grit and the heroism and the courage and um, the exhaustion of the, these guys is uh, pretty much unparalleled in uh, modern military history. Yeah. Um, there are like a couple of veterans that from the, from the fight, from the battle that participated in the film, right? And you, you want to right, well, there, there's more than a couple. I mean, uh, first of all, Ty Carter, one of the recipients of the Medal of Honor, was on the set for the entirety of the battle sequences. <laughs> and he was able to get really, really specific with us. Like, uh, certainly in as far as his stuff was concerned. Yes, I opened my door. I opened the door to the Humvee with my left hand, and I and I took cover next to this tire, and and I ran this way, and I held um, a soldier, a guy named Stefan Mace, that he saved. Um, I carried him this way, and showed us exactly how we carried him, and even and he even replicated all his behavior in um, from that day for us. And so I think that as far as the Ty Carter story is concerned, we're pretty pristine. There's a guy named uh, Daniel Rodriguez, a special, he was a specialist during that battle. And um, he, he worked in the mortar pits and he plays himself in the movie, which is pretty amazing. And um, not only does he play himself, but he had to recreate for us the death of his best friend, which was a highly emotional, you know, moment for him, I'm sure, and certainly for, uh, all of us who, uh, who witnessed it. Plus, uh, other soldiers from battle came to the set and um, helped guide us through the, through the movie. So as far as the battle is concerned, you know, most of it I think is, is, is extremely accurate and that which is not is, is close, very close. Okay. Uh, do you think that, is there like, I know you're a critical guy. Um, do you think that there's literally, any- I, Literally I was a film critic, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but any do you, do you did you try to like um, bring any critical value to the film in any ways like about the way that these soldiers are treated maybe? Uh, by oh, do you, mean, do you mean do I am I trying to send a message or something? Kind? Yeah, yeah, a critical no, message. Yeah. Well, you know, for the most part, this movie is a chronicle of the events that occurred there. But you cannot help but walk away from the film wondering um, why the men were put into this position in the first place. And um, it's like those movies like The Paths of Glory, where you have to sort of subanalyze how the higher ups often have a disconnect between what's happening to the lower downs, the generals and the colonels versus um, the privates and uh, the specialists and, and, even the, uh, and even the sergeants. You know, that they are made to pay them for the mistakes of the leaders. And um, so, you know, because the, this unit had no mission other than, other than to survive the mirror. There was, they, they, there was right. nothing else for them to do. And um, like the, the mission that they were initially set up with years and years earlier, that unit, to, um, to, to make good with the villagers, to uh, stop the supply route of weapons from Pakistan, that, that all went away a long time ago, and now all they're doing is hoping to stay alive. In fact, that, um, that outpost was supposed to be closed uh, six days later. And of course, mm -hmm. it ended up closed, you know, on that October 3rd date. Right. 
Uh, so there is a question from the audience. Um, we know that you know in the end of the end of the film, we see that uh, the real life uh, um, uh, soldiers. Uh, mm -hmm. But there, you also dedicated uh, the film to your son, right, Hunter? Um, yes. So there's a question about that, about My the son. person. If you want to mm -hmm. tell more about your son. Well, uh, my son died while I was making this film. And it was, uh, you know, the single worst day of my life, the most profound day of my life. And um, to put it into a nutshell, as I, you know, I, I, we were in prep and I flew to Michigan to be with him, um, with the rest of his family, when, um, while he was um, dying in, in Michigan, he had had a blood clot. And um, I had to make the decision to remove him from all the devices. And um, he's a wonderful, wonderful boy, you know, best, my best, best friend and a massive film lover. And he was going to be in the industry. He was already an assistant film editor. But um, I, as I saw the last movement of his chest right before he passed away, Amir, I realized that he was the same age as the soldiers who died in that battle. And at that time, with the encouragement of my daughter Paige, I, I knew that I, I knew I had to go back and finish the film. And I now was in much more unity with the, with the families who I really love to this day. We will be forever, uni forever united. Uh, but it was my son's spirit really that I think uh, ended up guiding this film he more than deserved the dedication that I gave him at the end of this film. You know, Amir, I'll say one more thing about that, and that is that they say that um, we die twice, one, one, once when we leave this earth, and the second time is the last time anybody ever says your name. Mm. And now with this movie, maybe people can say Hunter's name for a long time, but they definitely will say the names of the soldiers who died. And um, they'll say it for a very, very long time. And so we keep them alive a little longer as well. Yeah, I'm so really sorry to hear you know hear the story. It's uh, yeah, it's tough. But, it's not easy. I'll tell you, it's not easy. Yeah, yeah, but 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 seeing the name on this incredible movie, so you know, it's it's, it's well, honorable. That's just it. you know, that that's that, that's just it. You know, I I do think that the film is it's definitely my best film, and um, I think it, it it's an interesting film in that you know it, it's about a very specific event. I think it's a very entertaining film only because uh, I would challenge you to find a better battle sequence, maybe uh, mm -hmm. Private Ryan and uh, Black Hawk Down, you know, there, there are some great battle sequences, but I, I, will, I, I will say it rivals it. And, um, and you get to see what um, just a normal human is capable of. It's about human capabilities, you know, and what these guys endured is simply, un it's unreal. It's just unreal, it's unfucking real, man. You know, yeah. and, and an interesting thing is that, you know, again, going back to heroism and all that in the end, and I think also in the trailer, you say that they're just fighting for their lives in the end. They're not, they're not fighting for a big goal or for, you know, to no, they're fighting, conquer like anything. Said, they're fighting to survive, Amir. Yeah. You know, survival was the mission, period. And, right. uh, and, and they pulled it out. And any American who wants to go and see this film will feel good about being an American and any human that wants to go see this film will feel good about being a human. You know, what, 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 what can we do when our backs up are really against it? The other thing is that these men all died for one another. Right. You know, almost every person who lost their lives lost it trying to save another person, which is except, absolutely exceptional. It's exceptional, you know. Right. We, we had almost no money to make this movie. We had about 30 days, a couple of days, more than 30 days to make the film. And, um, you know, we were like fully invested in it. And we were always driven by things like my son, by things like the fact that Ty Carter, the Medal of Honor recipient was there. The people that were in the battle were there. It was con you know, like whatever problems we had were minuscule compared to um, what people that are actually serving in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, go through. Or, you know, countries that are always a war go through, like, like Israel, for example. You know, it's, it's really something. It was really something making this film.
looks like something. <laughs> um, so what 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 are the you know the plans for the future for this film in this like turbulent times? Well, the film is opening on it's opening on July third. It'll be in whatever theaters are available. And um, for the people that haven't seen the film that are considering seeing my film, um, I would recommend seeing it in the theater if your health uh, experts will tell you that it's okay, um, because it really is a big screen movie. Otherwise, it'll also be on VOD on that day, video on demand, and um, will be readily readily available on on July third. We thought it was a good weekend to open the film. Yeah, because of uh, July fourth, fourth of July. That's right. That's right. Were you you were in the military, Amir? Were you in the Israeli military? Yeah, but also not in not in, the, in a, any combat role. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, any? I don't. Well, maybe I'm just like. A, maybe it's my impression, but any chance to you know. See any award season in the, in the horizon for? Um, I, I believe, I, what I believe is that several of the, the people, I'm glad you brought that up, that several of the actors in the film are certainly worthy of uh, consideration. Um, I also the director? I, I, I don't know, but I'll, I'll tell you what, directors want their actors to win more than, or get nominated, more than they want to win or get nominated because Actors want to work with directors who will get them nominated, not who get themselves nominated. I don't, I really, what I really want to focus on are my actors uh, who I think deserve it. And um, the, uh, well, uh, the, the cinematographer, the, um, the production designer, uh, Eric, Eric Carlson, uh, the, the DP was uh, Lorenzo Senatore, you know, my editor, Michael, Michael Duffy, um, composer Larry Groupe. Uh, I think the song at the end of the movie is pretty cool, and um, I wrote that song actually at the end of the movie, and um, I wrote it on a plane coming back from Michigan. It took me the flight to write it. I wrote it through tears, um, and uh, I even wrote the, the music. And uh, uh, and then uh, Larry Grippe and Rita Wilson, who sings the song, put their professionalism into it and uh, showed <laughs> me you know, my ways in a couple of areas, and um, and we ended up with uh, I think a a really beautiful song for um, you know for the troops for the soldiers. Yeah, apparently Larry Groupe is from LBI, by the way. Uh, yeah, he sent, he sent us an email. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's fun. He's a, um, He's a wonderful man, and he pretty much runs the music department at um, at um, or the um, composing department at um, University of Indiana University. Okay, so. Again, uh, I think we got to go right now, but like, God, okay. it was an amazing film. And th thank you so much for being so supportive uh, behind the scenes and, you know, helping us to get the film to the big screen on LBI. Uh, yeah, I re I'm really proud of this film as, as an opening film. Um, well, we're, we're proud to have had you show, uh, shown it, uh, Amir, and and we're, we're, we saw, uh, you know, some good response already, even on Twitter. And um, we're um, we're grateful for your having shown it. And uh, good luck with the rest of the, the festival. It looks like you have a winner there. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. Uh, next uh, year, you'll join us with Larry Gruppe. <laughs> next year in Jerusalem. Here we go. Uh, okay. Well, let, let's do it in, on LBI. <laughs> next year in Long Island. Okay, very good. Cheers. Bye-bye. Long Beach Island. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.